Our Father, our God, we come this afternoon to give you the praise and give you the honor for such a time as this that how you blessed us, how you woke us, causing our eyes to open this morning to see another day in which we've never seen before. Thank you for your footmen, goodness, and mercy today, God. Oh, God, we pray that while we stand before you in this company that you will send that anointing that make preaching easy. Send that anointing that destroys every yoke. And for that, Father, we'll give your name the praise and the honor and the glory and the people of God said, amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, we thank God. Amen for how he blesses us, give us strength. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, because we don't know how to go out nor come in, but he certainly knows what to do for us, when to do it for us, and how to do it for us. Am I right? And we thank God for being saved today, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with fire. And ask you to keep on praying with us that our highest aim will remain at the feet of Jesus. So he gets the glory and he gets the honor and he gets all of the praise on this day and forevermore. Amen. We thank God for all our minister staff. Amen. Our mothers, our deacons, and deaconess. And we thank God, amen, for, amen, um, well, no visitors today, all of us home folks, all of us kin folks, am I right? Amen. So we thank God for all of you, amen, being in the house of the Lord. Not going to stand before you long because we have a long ways to go this day. Amen. And a busy week, the entire week. And we encourage you as much as you can to attend um, the assembly. Amen. Amen. So you get the first hand news and not the second hand. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Or the third hand. Because when all those hands go to traveling down, somebody ain't going to say the right thing. Amen. They ain't going to remember. Am, am I right? So you attend. Amen. And you attend. Amen. And it certainly will be a blessing. And we're praying. And not only that, but I want you to pray. Amen. For the success of the meeting. Amen. Uh, the prayer warriors. I want you to go in some warfare. And let's pray for the success of the meeting. And pray for our diocese bishop. Bishop Michael Flynn. Amen. So you pray for him that God will give him what he needs to lead this diocese on to victory and on to whatever God is carrying us. Am I right? I don't hear nobody. I say, am I right? Amen. Amen. I, I realize everybody can't be the chief. Somebody going to have to be a follower. Amen. Before you can be a chief, you need to be a follower. Am I right? Amen, amen. It's the good followers that makes good leaders. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. amen. Go with me in a strange book, and it's not a strange book, but a book that most folks won't preach from. Amen. This was laid upon my heart when I entered into this church this morning. Revelation, the 19th chapter. I want to deal with just a few verses of that 19th chapter. The 11th verse through the 14th. John the Revelator said, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in his righteousness he does judge and make war. 
His eyes was a flame of fire, and on his uh, head was many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with, with a vetcher dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the army of which, uh, I did tell y'all, 14th verse. And the armies which were in the heaven followed him upon white horses. Everybody say white horses. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And so readeth the scripture. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know Tamia sang this song and said, take me to the king. Ain't that what she said? But I just want you to know the king is coming. A amen, somebody. I, I said the king is coming. Amen. A lot of folks don't believe that and I'm even finding out that even as church folks, a man that is in church, don't really, in a sense, believe it neither. Because if people really believe it like it should be, a man, then people would be more concerned about their one soul. A man, where they're going to spend eternity. Come on here, am I right? Amen. Just a few. I, I'm not going to talk long. Amen. Today, but uh, uh, one day, Amen. Uh, he's coming back. What is coming back for? To judge this world. A am I right? And ready or not, he's coming. Somebody say he's coming. So we got to be ready. The king is coming. Tell your neighbor that the king is coming. I didn't say Obama, but amen, but I said Jesus. Amen. He's, the, he's the king. He's coming. Amen. In the opening chapter of Revelation, amen, set the tone for everything else that is going to happen in the book. And you can see that in Revelation 1 and 1. It tells us that this book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then when we look at Revelation 1, 7 through 8, it tells us that behold he come with clouds. Amen. And every eye shall see him. Touch somebody and say every eye shall see him. It doesn't matter if folks are blind in that day when he comes, the blind eyes will be open because the written, written word said every eye. I don't care if you have cataracts on your eye. I said the word said every eye going to see him. Am I right about it? You might want to close them, but in that day your eyes shall be open. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Somebody said thank the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him. The very one that pierced him in his side, go see Jesus. Y'all ever thought about that? That's going to be an awesome day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They also which pierced him and all kindreds, amen, of the earth shall well before him. Even so, amen. Look at what the Lord said. I am Alpha and Omega. He's the beginner and he's the end, says the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank, thank the Lord. Listen what the Lord said. Which is, which was, and which is to come. He is Lord. Songwriter say every knee going to bow. Every tongue going to confess. Amen, amen. I don't care if you're Buddha, believe in Buddha, Buddha got the bow down. Sun Yon Moon got the bow down. Everybody. Somebody say everybody. 
I know folks go around here and talk their big stuff. Amen. Who they believe in and what they believe in. And many folks don't believe in Jesus. That, 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 that's all right. But one day, you're going to believe in him. Ain't nobody else but him. Let's tell God thank you. Come on, let's tell God thank you. The book, amen, this book is about Jesus and about his return, amen, to his earth to rule and reign. Amen, somebody. Amen. I don't care how bad the economy is. I don't care which way, amen, this economy goes. Come on here. But amen. But one day my Savior, my Lord, he's coming back. Not to save folks, not to get folks ready. But he's coming back to rule and reign. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I know I got y'all attention this morning. Revelation chapter 5 take us into the heavens. And God is shown holding, amen, a book that is sealed with seven seals. Five and one tell us, amen, that a search is made in heaven and in earth to find someone that is worthy to open the book. Thank the Lord. Somebody say a search. Amen, amen, amen. Couldn't find nobody. Search high and low and still couldn't find nobody. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say a search was made in heaven and in earth to find someone that is worthy to open the book. But no one is found. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Somebody said nobody is found. Amen. The Bible tells us that John, he wept. Amen. He was weeping. Amen. Amen. At the news that they couldn't find nobody. Thank the Lord. Amen. Are y'all reading your Bibles? Amen. Because he despairedly wants to know. Amen. What was written in the book. I want to know, John said, I want to know what is written in the book and can't find nobody. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Has there ever been a time in y'all life when you really want to know what God got for you to do? And you ain't had nobody to tell you? <laughs> Couldn't find nobody. Amen, 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 amen. I don't want nobody to tell me what I feel and what I think. Certain things you got to know. Amen, somebody. Amen. You dealing with my eternity. Because if God didn't say do it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, help me in this house for a minute or two, Holy Ghost. Let, let, let's tell God, thank you. Amen, amen. So John, the Bible said, John began to weep the cause. Amen, amen. There was nobody, amen, that was within that search to find somebody. Then when I read John, amen, again, John is told not to weep because the Lamb of God is worthy to open the book. He was weeping because Nobody was worthy. But then the word came back and said, don't weep, John. The Lamb of God is worthy. The Lamb of God is worthy to take away your sin. What can take away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When Jesus walked on the scene. Hear what? Amen. The prophet John said, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Now you ought to, you say folks ought to tell somebody since he washed me, since he took my sins away, there is something you need to know. My sins is away. That's what I said, that mind that I used to have, I don't have that mind. Anytime you get the Holy Ghost and the Lamb of God takes something away from you, you ain't got no business searching for it again. You ain't got no business going after it. You ain't got no business longing for it. Hello, somebody. 
or out of mind is the devil's workshop. Y'all cannot talk. Let's tell God thank you. So the word came to John again and said, don't weep. Don't weep. You don't have to cry. We got somebody. <laughs> somebody worthy. We don't, we, 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 <laughs> we got somebody. That name is Jesus. Come on. He's worthy to open the book. When I read the word of the Lord, amen, and when the, the Lord, amen, took the book from the hand of God, come on here, heaven just burst forth in a praise. Amen. Heaven begin to worship. Heaven begin to worship. Somebody say heaven begin to worship. Amen. Because the Lord Jesus has been found worthy to take the book and to open the seals. He was worthy because in him there was no sin. Come on here. He was worthy. Thank the Lord. To open the book. Heaven burst forth in joy, worship. And I think when you come in the house of the Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. That you ought to, your main priority ought to be coming in here and worshiping God. You ought to burst forth into praises. Good as God been to you, and then where God brought you from, what could have been, what should have been, but the Lamb of God intervened. And that ought to be something for you to give God some praises. Nobody have to say a special word, amen, to rouse you up. Just because he woke you up this morning, you ought to be blessing God. You ought to be praising God. You ought to be telling him thank you. Hallelujah. We got something to praise God for, but we won't praise him. We got something to bless him for, but we won't bless him. The Bible said heaven burst open with joy in praises. Sometimes you ain't got to wait for nobody to open their mouth. Y'all sit down. You ain't got to wait for nobody to open their mouth to sing a song. And then you ought to have a song already in you. You ought to have a praise already in you. You ought to get up in the morning blessing God. Thanking God that your eyes came open just to be here. I know you woke up mad, but you ought to be glad. <laughs> I know you got upset, but you ought to be glad. You got hands that clap. You got feet to walk on. You may not have much as other folk, but God has truly blessed you. If you really be honest, God has blessed you. You ain't like folks three houses down from you. You yet got something to praise God for. You yet got something to bless God for. If his hand had not been on our life, then what would we do? But God. Honey, 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 look at somebody and say, don't come in church looking any kind of way. Looking under, out of cross, out of through, out of up, out of round, out of come looking right. And tell God, thank you. Yes, sir. I'm so glad to be here. Could have died last night. Could have slept away last night. But I, 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 he woke me up anyhow. Let's tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. 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 I'm stuck back there. Y'all to praise him. You ought to praise him. You ought to praise him. Some of your children have been sick this year. You ought to praise him. Some of them have been to a doctor. You ought to praise him. And even if your life is in a turmoil, you ought to praise him in the high. The more you praise him, the more you step out, you walk out. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Book said that when we study, amen, the chapter we discover, amen, that there are seven seals in the book. Amen. In the title of deeds, amen, the title of deed of the planet Earth. <laughs> amen. Amen. The title of deed of the planet Earth. Ain't nothing in this earth that is going on that God don't know nothing about it. Honey, you can, you, you, you can run around here and talk about trickle tree all you want. There was a tree he told Eve and he told Adam, really, amen, not to bother that tree. Because the day you do, you're going to die. Some, some, some things is a slow death. But you're going to die. Hallelujah, somebody. For the Bible said the wages of sin is death. The wages you keep doing it, it piles up, it builds up. Yes, sir. It weighs too much for the natural body to handle. <laughs> Come on here. Sins ain't nothing but a disease. And that's what trigger off things in our lives. So you got to get to the root of the problem. Dig it up by the root. Anything that is in me, Lord, I want you to take it out. Because I don't want it to pardon me. Hallelujah. I'm preaching. I just ain't want to tune up. I ain't going to tune up. I'm going to talk up here today. Amen. Amen. You see here, Satan here is called the God of this earth. Call it the second Corinthians 4 and 4. Amen. He may be the little G. Not the capital G. Let me say that again. Not the capital G. But he's the little G. Come on here. The God of this world today. But he is not worthy to retain his grip on the work. Amen. On the world. He can't hold it. It's not his. He can't boss it. It's not his. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I, I, I just believe the word of the Lord said, Great is he that is in me. Now you got to recognize who's in me. Great is he that is in me. Who is talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is, is in me. Is he in you? Then he that is where? I don't need the devil in me. All I need is Jesus. He'll satisfy all of your needs, your deepest need. Come on here, am I right? I say, am I right? That stuff you long for. You think you just got to have it. Amen. If you pray to him, if you get on your knees and talk to him, if you go to him in prayer, amen. Am I right? He'll move the natural crave out of your mouth. Or should I say out of your spirit? Out of your spirit because... Amen. All of us, come on here, come on here. Don't look at me like, amen, you ain't never craved nothing. All of us have craved some foolish stuff. We done been in areas of our life, come on here, that we done craved for what is not ours. Am I right? You see that good looking man walking down the hall? Watch your holly fall. You got a crave on you. He or she can be ugly. It's dust. I don't care what you say. Nature is a mess. You said what you want to say. 
Nature ain't gonna run around and hunt the cutest thing and go find whatever it can find and get the appetite off of it. Y'all ain't hip at me. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't scared of y'all. I'm gonna preach to y'all. <laughs> Let's tell God thank you. A am I right about it? Somebody say, am I right about it? Yeah, I'm right. Amen, amen. You got to recognize that that devil come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He don't care how sanctimonious you are. He don't care if you're a missionary from the Los Angeles district or the First Bone Church of the Living God. He don't care nothing about I'm a bishop. He don't care nothing about who you are. His main objective is to destroy you. Put your name out there, a good name. That name is better than any what? Riches. All this fame folks talking about. Honey, my name is way better than that. Because even a movie stars messing up. Honey, they get married today, they divorce tomorrow, they back on hooked up with somebody else three days later. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Let's tell God thank you. Come on, let's tell God, clap your hand again and give God some praise. But the Bible tells me that he is not worthy, amen, to retain his grip on the world. And that's why we ought to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on here, am I right? I said, am I right? One thing Jesus said, if I be what? Now you mad and you can't lift him, lift him up. You frustrated and you can't lift him up. You going through, you can't lift him up. You got problems, come on. You can't lift him up. You can't pay your car payment. You can't lift him up. But honey, if you ain't got no money to meet your obligations, you ought to still lift Jesus up. That if I lift him up, he gonna send somebody to, 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 to take care of me. Somebody gonna pay my bill. I'm not going homeless. I'm not going, come on here. I'm gonna have some meat to eat. <laughs> come, come on here. Because David said, David said it. I didn't say it. David said it. It, it. it was there before I got here. It was there before I seen it. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. And Moses told the children of Israel like this, you got to stand still to see the salvation of God. <laughs> you got to stand still. You, you can't be running all over town trying to make it happen yourself. But you got to stand still. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm finna pray. I'm finna get out of here. I'm finna get ready and pray. So I can go. Let's tell God thank you. Let's, let's tell God thank you. But the Bible tells me, said this world, somebody said this world, listen that this belongs to Jesus. And Jesus alone, it don't belongs to nobody. It don't even belong to the bank. It belongs to Jesus. It don't belong to Satan. It belongs to Jesus. Somebody said Jesus. Jesus. Alone. Alone. And then the Bible tells me that the day will come when he will take possession of this world away from Satan. He's coming to take it back. Come on, come on up in here. You, 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 you done had it long enough and, and, and all that stuff you done, it ain't got nowhere. It was never yours in the beginning. Come on. This world don't belong to the devil. It belongs to Jesus. Come on here. And since it belongs to Jesus, whatever I stand in need of, amen, I can ask according to what the word of the Lord said. Ask and what? It shall be given. Seek and you shall do what? Knock and the door shall be what? 
So when did the world belong to the devil? Beloved, it don't belong to the devil. It belongs to Jesus. I go right back to what Moses said. So therefore, if it belonged to Jesus, you got to stand still to see the salvation of the Lord is working in your life. I wish we had some standstill saints. Running all around in circles. The circles in town, come on here. The circles going to see the circles. Hallelujah. The fair going to see the fair. Spend all their money at the fair and they got nothing to give. Jesus. I'm going to take a ride. When will you take a ride through the gospel? When will you ride the roller coaster of the gospel? When will you let the gospel be the gospel that is in your life? There ain't got nobody up in here. Didn't you tell me you know Jesus? Didn't you tell me you got faith in Jesus? Well, why don't you ride the roller coaster? See, the fair didn't wake you up. They ain't, they ain't blessing you. But they will break you. And if you ain't careful, you'll get on them rides and they will throw you. Don't you dare be broke down in the air. The Bible said we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. So you can ride what you want to ride in the air, but I'm going to stay here until he catch me up. I'm going to stay here until I be caught up. <laughs> Ain't got no help up in here. Let, let's tell God thank you. Come on, let's tell God thank you. Yeah, but Bishop, this is the first Sunday. This is the first Sunday the Lord told me to tell you that the king is coming. Quit riding your roller coasters on your Ferris wheel and get rooted in anchor. Hold your Bibles up. Rooted in anchor. Rooted and anchor in the word of God. Yeah. Somebody said, yeah. The word. It brought me here. It's going to keep me while I'm here. And when the Lord take me out of here, it's going to be the word that's going to pick me up out of my grave. Hello, somebody. This world, it belonged to Jesus because of three great reasons. Truth here. It is his by right of creation. He made it. Who else made the world? In the beginning was the word. And the word was. And all things that are made, who were made by? By God. Am I right about it? Praise the Lord. It was made, uh, it was healed by the right of Calvary because he redeemed it. He came the way of Calvary to redeem the world, to bring us back, to restore us back. Ain't y'all glad to be back? How many saved folks I got in the house? Didn't he redeem you? Didn't he bring you back? You was wondering. Come on here. I I amen, somebody. Did 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 didn't he allow you to hear the word of God? The truth of God and it prick your heart? And you couldn't do nothing but come running and telling God to save me. I yield, I yield. I can't hold out no longer. And then for you that are not saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't know what you're missing. Now I'm not telling you that you ain't going to encounter no trouble. Because that's life. You're going to go through something. Before you get to what you got to get to. You're going to encounter some things. Come on here. 
I know folks tell folks it's prosperity all the way, but honey, sometimes you got to be broke before you can get anything. Then when you get it, you learn how to appreciate it. Then when you get it, you come back and give. And it shall be given. Press down, shake it. Running. Shall men do what? Now God's going to call somebody giving your bosom. Because you gave. Come on, I know that ain't what I'm preaching, but that's part of it. When you look at the word of God at all, the whole Bible talks nothing about, amen, more about one thing than it about giving. We serve and we have a giving God. He gave more than we will ever give. Thank the Lord. It is healed by right or conquer. He will retake it. Coming right back here and get what is rightfully his. Put up no fuss about it. It don't belong to you. <laughs> uh, draw no line and cross and tell me to just step over. It don't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And it's coming back to retake it. Come on here. To get his world back. And if I was you today, if I was you today, I would listen to this foolishness and say that Jesus ain't came back and he's not coming back. He hasn't come back yet. I think I got 20 more years of my life before I get saved and give my life to Christ. And then I come, honey, you don't know when he's coming back. Every time he come back, amen, every time somebody die, he have come back to get them. Short grave, long grave. He's coming back just like he said. And if you don't know Jesus, somebody said if you don't know Jesus, the day is a good day for you to get to know Jesus. You can't continue to live like you are living. You can't continue to walk like you are walking. You can't continue to mingle with the wrong crowd like you are mingling with them. As Paul said, there is a more excellent way. Y'all can I talk? You can't keep on being a sugar mama and a sugar daddy. After a while, your sugar gonna run out. That sugar gonna lump up. It's gonna get hard. Beat all you want in this thing. Anybody know about lumpy sugar? You can't keep going like you're going. This world don't belong to you. I don't care how much stake you say you got in it. Where you put your claim, it don't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And if your name ain't written down in the Lamb Book of Life, I don't care how much you cut the check. I don't care how much you sit on the bench. I don't care how much you cut the radio on. I don't care how much you get up in the morning and have morning meditation. A lot of folks get up and have it and still live raggedy. Honey, your heart got to be right. You got to go in there and check your heart. Am I right about it? Hallelujah. He lives in our heart. If that heart haven't changed, and that heart haven't changed that attitude, if that heart haven't changed you, period, it must be a change. Change your mind. Change in the thoughts. Change in the action. <laughs> Hello, somebody. That even if I mess up, I still got a chance to get it right. I can get on my knees and fall under repentance and say, Lord, I know I messed up. Come on up in here. But if you give me another chance, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, God. Help me, help me, help me, help me. See, people, people love to talk about what folks done. But how many people talk about what they done? See, I said that to say this is easy to see the other man, but, but, but you really can't see yourself. Because the flesh is a mess. Come on, Bishop, you preaching. Yes, sir, you preaching. Let's tell God thank you. Come on, let's tell God thank you. The entire book, somebody said the entire book of Revelation has been leading us, amen, to this great moment, amen, that we consider together today that whole purpose, amen, of the tribulation period. And people that like, it ain't going to be no tribulation. Some of this stuff, I hope I'm not here to go through it. Y'all ain't telling me nothing. Let's tell God thank you. Chapter 6 and through 18, amen, is to prepare the world for the coming of the king. We got to be prepared. Saints, we got to be prepared. We can't go around here with our nose tuned up. We can't go around here in the shape that I'm I got to get prepared to meet the king. Didn't the preacher tell us last week if you're going to put something together, you need a manuscript. You need a guideline to go by. A am I right about it? Well, the word of the Lord is our instruction. It, it, it tells us what we need to do. Come on. How we need to do what we need to pull off, what we need to put on. What we need to stay together and support one another. Look at your neighbor and ask him, don't you want to see me in heaven with you? Well, we got to stay together and help one another. Hello, somebody. Jesus came to save the lost. Save the lost. Somebody said, save the lost. Yes, he did. Save the lost. Save the lost. Amen, amen, amen. In this passage of scripture, we hear about the preaching, talking, and just talk of this moment in the future when Jesus will return to this earth in a powerful and glory to claim what is rightfully his. And he is not out of order. He is certainly in order to get what is rightfully his. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. It is rightfully, it belongs to Jesus. Then the an, an, angelic, I know y'all young folks don't know nothing about this. The angelic gospel singer said, all that I need is in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Jesus is coming back to get what is what? Rightfully his. I got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. Come on here. He's coming to get us out of this. I'm not afraid to die when I know I got my business right with Jesus. You ought to be afraid to leave here if your soul ain't right with him. Thank the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I told him yesterday that when your time is up, you got to move. You got to go. Ain't nothing you can do to stay here. Honey, you got to make every moment count. Every moment of your saved walk, every moment of your saved life, come on here. Every moment of you spending with Jesus and Jesus is spending with you, you've got to make it count. In other words, I'm like a, a, a prophet is wicked. You've got to make God look good. We want to make ourselves look good. But we got to make God look good. Let this light. So shine. Let it do what's shining you. 
that men may see your what? And when they see you on the battlefield, when they see you working for Christ, come on up in here. Am, am I right about it? You are making God look good. My wife don't want me to make her look bad. I don't want her, y'all ain't said nothing to me. I don't want her to make me look bad. But I think your husband ought to make you look good. I think your wife ought to make you look good. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I think as being children of the kingdom of God, you ought to make God look good. Something ain't right when you ain't making somebody look good. Some love done, 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 done got melted right here. Done got waxed cold. H hello. Some love done said, I don't care no more. Something wrong with that. When, 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 when love hides, a mother tools a fault. When love know how to look over what you've done, and yet love you anyhow. That's love. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you married folks. So you single folks ain't married, but you need to hear this so you'll know how to do when you do get married. A am I right? He he hello, somebody. Because we think they're getting married and just get jumping in the bed and, 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 and 20 minutes later when trouble comes, we want to just jump out. We want to run when our fellow get wet and live. Honey, honey, this thing is sticking out to death do us part. Hello, somebody. I'm here to serve God until I die. Y'all ain't here, am I right? Come on, come on, come on, am I right? Yeah, you better love. You better love. Somebody say you better love. Honey, you can fight till you drop blood, but you better love. Still better love. Because in the, in, the, in the ounce of hate in us, we ain't going in God's kingdom. I'm going to say this again. Any hate in us, we ain't going in God's kingdom. And I don't care how much money you done matched on anybody's table, you're going to match yourself in hell. You got to be right. You got you, you, you to make sure there ain't nothing in this heart stopping this heart from beating righteousness so God can look at the heart. Even if you're going through something, come on up in here, you, you let righteousness beat in this heart. Yes, sir. I come out here to live right. Yes, sir. I don't know what I'm going to encounter, but I quit the sin business of life to live right. I don't know what I'm going through. Help me, somebody. Do y'all hear me? You don't know what you're going through. You don't know what you're going to encounter. But you got to remember, it's in my mind to live right. It's in my mind to stay with Jesus. It's in my mind to hold on just a little while longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they don't like it, it's all right. Talk about me, it's all right. But I got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. We got to be prepared. We got to prepare. Amen, 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 amen. The world for the coming king. This world got to be prepared in it's our job. He gave you the job. Preach the word. Preach it when they don't want to hear it. He gave you the word that is not preachers to be a witness. My God, you can't ship it off on nobody. Because all of us got a part to play in this world. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Every last one of us got responsibility. Every last one of us encountered with somebody throughout the day. And you got to be a witness. You got to tell them. You got to get them prepared. Quit telling folks they all right like they are. And when they lie, it's messed up. People want a way out of what they are in. Come on here. Then one day you got tired of hurting. You got tired of going through. You got tired of smelling your sin. Well, they are tired of smelling their sin. They need somebody they can confine in. Somebody they can talk to. That won't, that, that, that won't run off and tell their business to somebody else. Somebody that will go in prayer and pray for them. That when I come back in your presence, you don't look at me funny. You don't look at me like I'm nobody. But you see me as a human being. Standing in a need for help. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody got time for you to talk about folks folk trying to get out of what they're in. You got the Holy Ghost. You ain't got no business going around folks talking about folk. You ought to be praying them out of that situation. You ought to be loving them out of what they're in. Yeah. Don't nobody want to hear that stuff. I'm in trouble. Something bothered me. I need help. Somebody say, I need help. God counting on me and you and everybody else in this room to prepare this world for the coming of the king. Tell me, folks, Jesus is coming. Honey, you don't need a ship. You need Jesus. You don't need millions of dollars. You need Jesus. That if you got Jesus, you got millions and trillions and billions. He's able to bless you. He's able to deliver you. You got to prepare the people. Prepare them. Get in your homes and talk about it. Cut the TV off. Call them around the table and fix the best dinner you can cook. And cook it with the taste of Jesus in it. And then strut your stuff and start talking about Jesus. The king is coming. I said the king is coming. Who's preparing who for the king? Who's getting who ready for the king? We was talking yesterday at the graveside and one of the preachers was telling me about he's so tired of folks being so mixed up in church and so uh, 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 the church being a turmoil like it is. I said it's all because folks have got in their self and they are not hearing the real gospel of Jesus Christ. It done got to the stage where people don't want to do what's right. People are not obedient anymore. Everybody got their own mission. And, 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 and just not on the mission field. Honey, you come to church to learn more about the mission to go out there and get on the mission field. To prepare folks to come up in here. Come on up in here. Come on up in here. Come on up in here. Can I hear somebody up in here? I don't care what they look like, what they smell like. Come on. If they ain't got nothing but flip-flops, if they ain't got no shoes at all, if they ain't got nothing but shorts, get them in here. You ain't always had what you had hanging down to your ankle neither. Hanging down to your ankle. Dress up the way you're dressing up. You ain't always been there. I ain't always been there, but my mama, my mama, my mama prayed for me because she knew where my heart was. And through that prayer, God made it possible. God brought it to pass. And I can say I done gave away some. And done got more than what I gave away. 
And my wife says, it's a shame for you to have all these shirts. But I said, baby, where in every bit of them? <laughs> come, come on up in here. I'm not trying to take nothing up and let nothing out. <laughs> you get rid of it, God will give you some more. Let me tell y'all something. Heaven look good. Heaven look good. I don't, I don't know if y'all ready to know what the street paved with gold. Talks about the walls of Jasper and, 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 and all them fine juries and things. Come on here. And don't you know why you're going through this land representing him? You got to look good for Jesus. See, it's the enemy that makes us fall in these pity parties. This self way. I don't care how they say. You saved and got the Holy Ghost, you ought to care every day. You ought to care when you don't feel like it. When you don't feel like it, there's days when you just don't feel like it, not at all. I know y'all ain't gonna agree with me, but you're human. I know human beings. The moment I get up, I say, uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's just what I say, uh-uh. Then there's a part of me say, oh, yes. You represent the king. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You got to know it. Tell somebody you got to know it. We got to get you prepared. Yes, sir, to meet the king because the king is coming. Tell somebody that the king is coming. When we look at this passage in the scripture, Amen. We are about, amen, and to tell you today, amen, and let me go back and tell you again, he's coming. I really want y'all to get that in your mind. If you don't hear nothing else, I say, when you leave out of here, you say one thing like the preacher said, told me yesterday, say, Bishop, they mind or not, act like they didn't want to hear what you said, but they got the word. And I said, brother, that's all what counts. And that's all that other stuff. I ain't worried about it. Before I got to the hearse, before I just got to the hearse, good. I had about seven of them come out of there. Woo! Where you come from? Enjoying that message. Before I left where there one, 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 one girl from folk office said, give me your address, your telephone number, because my pastor got to hear you. When it comes to the preaching of the gospel, you ain't got time to rhyme no gospel. You ain't got time to be no showboat. Some of us, we just show folks. We love to put on good shows, but honey. Good shows is going to hell. Am I right about it? Honey, we got to tell you the truth. We got to get you ready. Because the king told me he's coming. The king is coming. Folks don't want to get in Revelation. Y'all say Revelation is scary. But I say it's helpful. Help, help, help you to be aware of what's going to take place. Come on here, am I right? Honey, this world can't stay like it is. It can't continue to go like it is. The king must come. The king got to come. The king will come. Get his believers out of here. John looked again and he said, I saw a new heaven. He's going to clean this earth up. The devil and his mess and his foolishness got to go. Bible tells me the first time Jesus came to this world, he came as a redeemer. The next time he come, he's coming as a ruler. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go. He's coming as a ruler. He's going to rule this world. Woo! First time he came, he faced the cross. The next time he come, 
He will wear a crown. Got the glory and he didn't have your thorns on his head. Coming back with a crown. Somebody say a crown. Oh, man, like they were doing something. My God, the first time he came, he came, they put him in a tomb. But the next time he come, he will be a thorn. He's going to sit up on his thorn. I read the word of the Lord that said that, that all nations are going to be gathered. Together. And the king, somebody said the king, is going to set up on this throne. And he's going to do the separation. Let the wheat and the tire grow together. Ah, uh, come on, come on, let them grow together. But in the day of the harvest, he's going to do the separating. You ain't got to separate nobody in this church. You ain't got to put nobody out of this church. Because when Jesus gets back, he knows who. He knows who's his. All of us may look alike, but do all of us have what it takes to have on the inside? Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. All of us may, may, may be manging in together, but do everybody have the Holy Ghost? There were five wise and five was foolish. They manging together. But when it boiled down, to the next reality, five of them didn't have what they said they had. So they had to go to the store and buy some oil. What you going to do when the store is closed? Store going to be closed. I'm preaching. Thank God, thank God. I'm not, I'm not in Hooperville today, but I'm preaching. What you going to do when you ain't got no oil in your vessel? What you gonna do when, 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 when you can't get to church and it will be no church and no Bishop William and, and no Minister Brown and, and, and no Minister uh, Theodos, uh, uh, no co-pastor, no Minister World and no Minister Peterson here to preach the word of the Lord. No gospel being put out. Come on, yeah. You want to hear preaching to get some on in your vessel. Come on up in here and it ain't gonna be no preaching. You done played church. Good pretenders know how to fake this thing out. But when it comes down to reality, time to go before the bridegroom. Check me out. I need a light. And I'm not talking about no cigarette neither. I need a light so I can see where I'm going. So he can see me. He can spot me. And I ain't got it. Can you give me some of your oil? Can you share with me what you got so I can have some oil in my, in my vessel so he can see me when he come? No, I can't share mine. Got nothing to do with love neither. It got something to do with the fight. Hello, somebody. That I don't have what I got and what it takes to be called up, to be welcomed in. I don't have the oil in my vessel. So I got to go to the store to see what supermarket is open, to see what marketplace is available that I can get some oil so I can put in my lamp, so I can hold my pole light up, so he can see me when I come. Or when he come. But he said go. Buy for yourself. That, and, and, and that's what they told him. Go. Can't give your minds. So when they got there. They, they discovered. It was closed. When they got back. They were discovered. Discovered the door was closed. Don't you. Play around here. Beloved. And mess around in heaven, door is closed. 
Honey, your good deeds ain't going to get you to heaven. You could be my armor bear. You could be Kobach's armor bear. You won't read nowhere in the scripture where the armor bear went to heaven. They got to go for themselves. Every last one of you got to go for yourself. You responsible. Help me say, I am responsible. The door was closed. <laughs> uh, Holy Ghost. Somebody said glory. glory. See, y'all weren't expecting this kind of preaching today. But the door was closed. They came knocking on a closed door. Don't you dare come knocking on a closed church. And there's nobody to open the door. You better get all in your vessel. Your lamp trimmed and burning. To be ready when the king comes. Because you don't know when he's going to come. He give nobody no specific date. Nor day. Nor hour. Nor minute. Nor second. They're all over the world trying to search it out. When Jesus comes. <laughs> he can show up any day. He, he can come any moment. He can crack that sky any time. The disciples wanted to know. And the angels is up there in heaven and they don't even must know. And if he ain't told the angels in heaven, what makes you think he's going to tell you everything? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A little more, then I'm going. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say glory. glory. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then we see people on this planet Earth. Amen. Treating Jesus like a byword. They mocked him then. They are doing the same thing now. All these years I've been in the world. He ain't came yet, but you best believe one day he's coming. I ain't asking him when he come. I'm just, if every day he wake me up, I'm just getting myself ready. I'm just keep packing my suitcase. Because you got to know what clothes you got to have if you're going out of town to spend the night all week. Hello, somebody. See, 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 you need more than a blouse. And man, you need more than an undershirt. Am I right about it? Honey, you go out of town, you, 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 and you're going to stay a week or a month or three days, you're going to pack more. Am I right? I'm not really going to care three days worth of clothes. Sometimes I care over three days worth of clothes because I don't know what I'm going to run in. Sometimes my wife says, well, Bishop, you ain't going to but stay two days. Yeah, but I'm packing like four days, honey. Hello, somebody. You going out of town on the expense of somebody else and you ain't got no suitcase or no bag or, or no Walmart bag. And we staying overnight. And you are not prepared for overnight. That's sending a message to me. Hello? That's sending a message to me that you are not prepared for the journey. You are not making the necessary preparation to go on the trip. Honey, you got to begin to make the necessary preparation of packing your suitcase with the fruit of the spirit and make sure you have every all of the qualification as being a saint to get to heaven. I know how to dance. Cross my foot and square it back. But that don't mean I'm going to glory. Y'all love me? You got to have it in the heart. It has to be a change 
a heart, the heart got to change. When that heart changed, it changed everything about you. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I got to go, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The king is coming. Somebody said the king is coming. And this is the second time the door, the word of the Lord said, has been opened in heaven. In the book of Revelation, the first door, amen, that was opened. It was open so that the church, the bride of Christ, could join the Lord in heaven. According to Revelation 4 and 1. And when this door is open, it allowed the Lord to ride out of heaven to return to the earth. Somebody said to the earth. That the first door spe speaks of the rapture of the church. And the second door open. In heaven speaks of the return of Christ. And he's coming back. You best to know that. The rapture, his return. The rapture, his return. Who in here making themselves ready? I, I ain't just said it just because I said and you're going to agree with me now. Are you preparing yourself? You getting yourself? The signs is all around us. You know, they just sang a song when I was coming up. See the signs of the judgment. Yes. See the sign of the judgment. Yes. See the sign of the judgment. Yes, Lord. Time is rolling on. Time, time keep rolling. Time don't stop. Everything operates off of time. At God's appointed time. Jesus ain't coming before time. Jesus ain't coming past time. When Jesus get here, it's going to be when the Father say, it's time. I don't care if a district meeting is going on. I don't care if a seminar class is being taken. I don't care if you got done been on your job and you just sweating, working hard as you can work. I don't care if you had the cash raiders on your job. I don't care if you had the nursing home moving somebody into another room. When the time come, he said time, that's it, that's it. Well, see, I just want the Lord to just wait, you know, just a little longer. And uh, I'm not quite ready. He ain't paying that no attention. Honey, you can be out there smoking your dope. You can be, you can be running down somebody else's man. <laughs> and you can be running down somebody else's woman. But when, it's, when, when he said time, that's it. You're going to be caught in the wrong place. At the right time. I'm not going to say the wrong time. No, that would be the right time. Hello, somebody. We got to get ourselves prepared. This three-night revival. I told my wife the other night, before the man could preach, Holy Ghost got on me. I told her, I tell you, God, birth something. Tuck something out and put something in. Amen. 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 All this Mickey stuff ain't up for that stuff. Amen. It's holiness all the way. Amen. Come on, somebody. See, you got to feel the need that you want Jesus. And if you don't want Jesus, he don't knock at your door. He don't come where he's not wanted. Hello, somebody. But when you really want Jesus and you really want to be a part of Jesus and let Jesus be a part of you in your life, the day that you hear his word, 
you will harden out your heart. You will see yourself being lost. You will see yourself need to be found. Take it out of what you in and put in another category. The king is coming. What you going to do? Are you going to remain empty and wait for another chance? Are you just going to say, Lord, I surrender. I'm tired of being in the shape I'm in. You got to realize this one thing. The man that bone of a woman we come here, I know he said full of trouble, but I'm finna tell you, we come here and sing it. Just because I got saved when I was 11, I wasn't speaking in tongue at 10. But I wanted to be saved. I got to see it. You know, folks shouting on the floor, kicking out legs and crossing them. I said, God, I'm telling you, I want that too. <laughs> they told me, say, it ain't in the dance, but I still got my dance. Amen. I'm dancing while they don't quit dancing. Amen. So it's part of us. God want to save you. God want to change your life. Change your perspective. Hello, somebody. Make you brand new. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have done what? Behold, all things become. I know I've been changed. Whoa. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know the angels sing done. Whoa, whoa, Those of the church is open. Ah. Come on, Zion. Oh, 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 I know I've been, you know the angels in If you don't believe that I've been redeemed, you know the angels done. Come by letter candidate for water baptism. And if it's not the church of your choice, we'll be glad to get you where you need to go. Ah, whoa, whoa, no. You know the angels. Maybe somebody's not saved and want to be saved today. Will you come? Ah, 